All right, man, I don't mean to play the race card, but if I've learned anything about these phone cameras, I don't know if it's Google's fault, if it's uh, some poor engineer in Android, or if it's the, the hardware manufacturer's fault, the camera manufacturer's fault, whoever, but yeah, the auto exposure does not do well with my particular skin tone. Um, whatever, all good, not the point, not why we're here. So, good evening, my friends, and thank you everybody who's watching, and thank you especially everybody who submitted questions for this, the the week zero AMA for hashtag no carb, sorry, no coffee, no carb November. I know it's, it's a lot of words, even I get, them, I get confused. And if some of you guys saw, it's actually no coffee, no carb November, plus no veg November, because I've been a fan of Sean Baker, Dr. Sean Baker for a long time, and I saw that he uh, kind of put a call out about that, so I figured, hey, why the heck not? Let's um, let's dive into that and uh, join, join, join the, uh, the, the carnivore revolution, even though I did, uh, it's funny, I actually did the carnivore diet probably about a year and a half, two years ago when he very first started talking about it. And uh, so why not, why not revisit? But um, yeah, so let's get right to the questions. I don't, I don't want to take up too much time because it's late. And speaking of food, I actually want to go eat. Um, so I do appreciate again, everybody who submitted questions. I, I know I keep saying like every six months I'll do a thing. I think I, think I mentioned this on the other, the last video, every six months I'll, I'll say something about how, uh, hey, uh, I'm gonna be doing video content. I'm taking suggestions and I never do it. But uh, now that I'm actually a bit settled into this place, you know, here in, here in the university district, and you guys know I moved uh, apartments a little while ago, and, I, and part of my goal was to find a place that I felt like I could hang out for a bit and set up as a, as a good content studio and maybe even train. So here I am. Um, maybe we'll do, a, we'll do a walk around of it at some point. But uh, like I said, let's get, let's get right to these questions. And um, again, I know I've said this already, but thank you everybody who submitted questions because these are actually really good questions. And I know I, um, I gave some, some pretty simple answers on, um, on IG, but they're great because they're great springboards for real, um, for some, for, you know, for real discussion. And I think that's kind of how I'm going to do this thing. You know, one of the things that I've sort of been trying to figure out for a while is kind of what the content flow looks like. And I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of short form content. You know, I don't, I don't like trying to figure out how to, you know, how to squash a bunch of, you know, kind of meaningful discussion into 140 or 280 characters or, you know, 15 seconds or 60 seconds even. I mean, it's a valuable skill, presentation and all that. But um, yeah, I like to talk as you can tell because I've been rambling now for almost three minutes and haven't said anything um, meaningful. So let's get to the questions. I think that's the third time I've said that, right? <clears throat> so the first question, hold on these up. Uh, first question from, oh, from Hannah at uh, Annapolis Fitness. Do you typically keep to a keto diet? So the answer I gave on Instagram was, to summarize, to sum up, keto is one of many diet tools that I like to use um, quite a bit. And um, you know, there's a lot of definition of keto. I mean, it's, you know, some people say, you know, X type of keto means there's so much fat. And some folks say, well, X type of keto means that Actually, there's no fat or there's minimal fat and minimal carbs. It's all about getting your body into, into a state of, you know, some sort of active ketogenesis. And then there's all like, you know, medical, keto, like, you know, medical ketogenic diet. And there's, uh, you know, targeted and cyclical and performance, you know, that all have actually some degree of, of carbohydrate intake. But that's all the point. The point is not to get lost and go down the rabbit hole of what is or isn't keto or, you know, low carb, high fat or anything. The point is, um, the point I want to discuss here is the idea that there are a bunch of different dietary tools. I'm not, I, I don't ever stick to one diet. Um, that's, that's actually part of the experiment I've been running for the last probably almost eight weeks now is, you know, things like salt water fasting and extended fasting and, you know, low carb, high fat and, you know, high carb, low fat. Although I haven't done quite as much of that. And what, um, I would say what my strategy is, yeah, is to, to find these little tools that work for you, whether it's ketogenic or some degree of fasting or, you know, more of a bodybuilder, high protein, high fat, high fiber kind of thing, and figure out how they support each one of your goals. You know, for me, so inadvertently, when I look at a year, my, my year kind of tends to tends to come out as kind of a training mesocycle, you know, so I look at, or sorry, a training macro cycle, so I look at things like, okay, you know, maybe I want to, it's, it's the summer, so I want to work on, on power training, because I don't want to be outside, so I'm going to be able to go to a track and do some sprints, or maybe it's like, okay, winter, well, I'm going to do either body weight or, or heavy lifting, you know, the kind of thing I can do inside in, in, in a little bit of space. 
So if your training looks like that, or even if it doesn't, um, I, I think it's still not a bad idea to kind of say, hey, these are, you know, for how I feel right now, even, you know, maybe I felt kind of crappy the last couple of weeks, so I need to figure out a good sort of dietary, pull, pull, pull one of my dietary tools out of the toolbox and see, see which one works. And over time, you're gonna figure out like what really works for you. And I think part of my response was, um, you know, keto, whether it's high fat, high protein, low carb, or, you know, or high protein, moderate fat. And again, we're not going to hash out the whole, oh my God, high protein is going to, you know, gluconeogenesis is going to kick out of keto and all that. Gets, no, no, for, that's, that's a whole other conversation. Point being, you know, protein and carb, protein and fat versus protein and carb, whatever. Um, those, those sorts of diets, you know, where I'm, where basically, I mean, even a carnivore works really well for me. And I, I know that because I've tried it out quite a bit. And I know there's a ton of research in, you know, I mean, I follow guys like Paul Saladino and, and of course, Sean Baker. And, you know, I, I love all love their work. And, of course, the, you know, Mark Bell. And, you know, and there is more and more sort of, I don't know, call it evolutionary biology-based research now that's, that, that's showing that, hey, maybe this is the diet we're supposed to eat. And then, of course, you know, I, I see, you know, pictures and videos of Sean Baker just looking as jacked as but that, that guy, like, it looks, I mean, that guy's a brick. That guy's a tank. And hey, all he eats is meat. And, you, you know, the, the, the thing, there, there's always the, the conversation about, oh, genetics and, you know, and your specific gut health and all that. And I mean, I'm, but, and I'm not calling anybody out here, but the people I hear that from, at least in my circle, when I'm having conversations, it's like, have you actually gotten that tested or assessed, though? I mean, have you gotten a full, you know, a full blood panel done, you know, have you done some kind of, I don't even know if there are genetic workups that, that you can get out there that would, you know, tell you things, like I'm sure there are, but, you know, do you have that information to be able to say, or are you just saying that because, you know, your GP told you something, and not to, not to down on general practitioners or your family physician, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, unless, there's so much data out there, especially, and we're learning so much more when it comes to diet, when, it's, when it comes to nutrition, especially for performance nutrition, so, most of the people that I have these conversations with on a daily basis are very high performers. So I know that you folks probably need to, you know, have more in-depth conversations with professionals or do some of your own research and, you know, do, do some of your own kind of, you know, like, like I said, you know, what, what, is, what did we say in K3? What does Bruce say? Research your own experience, right? So <clears throat> don't be afraid to try, you know, especially if you're not, I mean, you know, especially if, if you don't have a six-figure performance contract on the line, you know, if, if you can afford to put on some pounds or feel like crap for a week or, you know, not die, I mean, there's nothing wrong with maybe saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go high, higher carb for a bit. I'm going to go, you know, maybe I'm going to go proper keto for a bit. And, you know, the answer to that is, you know, make sure that you do proper research. Make sure that, because now it's, there's so much out there. There's so much anecdote. There's so many books. There's so so many resources for just about anything you want to try. And you know, I, I know the talk recently has been around the game changers and even, you know, even something like that, I'm gonna say like, look, there's, they probably present, there's probably research that, that kind of backs up a lot of those uses. And, and I know all the, all, you know, all, all the other sort of, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, and I know there's people that respond, that, that have uh, other interests that, you know, they're kind of related to that and that, that's fine. I, but point, point being, you know, when, when I, again, when I go back and listen to a lot of these folks that I listen to on, on the YouTubes who are, you know, saying, you know, Ken Berry, like the Dr. Ken Berry or Paul Salino or, you know, any of these guys are, you know, they'll, they'll send you research. They'll send you all the research you want and you can read all of it and you can make your own decision or at least at the very least you can figure out how to maybe set up these dietary experiments so that they, so that they work best for you. And when I say work best, I mean that you can that you can undergo them or undertake them in a, as neutral a, uh, a configuration as possible, so that <clears throat> so that you know so, so that you're not ditching out something prematurely because there's something you didn't do. So for example, one of the things that I know a lot of folks will do when they jump on a keto or a higher fat diet, you know, you go, oh, well, I tried it and I got sick. You know, and that's more than likely that was that, you know, that you've heard the term keto flu. And you, well, we know that's a thing now. We know why that happens. You know, were you, what were your electrolytes like? You know, were you, were you using something like Element? Were you using something like, you know, Noon, you know, or KSP tabs? Basically something to, to kind of keep your hydration and electrolyte levels up. 
you know, things like that. You know, what, what, what was your total breakdown looking like? What, you know, what, what were your kind of, what was your fat breakdown? You know, you're saying your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. Were you actually eating some food that maybe you don't do well? You know, were you eating like a lot of nuts, for example, and maybe there's some nuts you don't do well with. So, and again, those are just kind of examples. And, and that's anything, you know, it's, it's the same for carnivores, the same for vegan, the same for, you know, there's, you know, do, do enough research that you can start to sort of understand a how to you know, a how to get onto the path first, and then as you kind of you know as you proceed down that path, know where you know what to be aware of and how to possibly adjust when something comes up. So that was a really long answer, um, and short answer is I I do tend to keep to a let's say a very carb managed diet. Um, so you know. At, I'll do you know a targeted keto or sick, you know for example. I mean I'm not obviously I'm not doing any carbs for the next thirty days, but uh, typically what I'll do is when I work out, you know I'll have you know an HBCD kind of you know based drink, something like plasma or like a fuse or something like that, and you know I might depending on the day I might have some oatmeal in the morning, but you but that's usually if I'm just like I'm like I'm like oh my god I need something else. Um, yeah, I would I would say I usually I usually tend towards the whole. At the very least, yeah, I'm not gonna say keto, but low carb or like I said, managed carb, you know, you know, targeted carb, time carb, carb cycle, and I guess it's not even a proper carb cycle. Um, so that's the answer to that. So yeah, I, I, I tend to keep my carbs very, very, very tightly managed. Unless I'm like, like if, if I'm out with, with somebody and you guys see me eating stuff, like you know, eating some fries or a burger or having a beer, that's probably the first time I've had that in a while, um, unless I was out with people like, you know, a week ago, so, or, or kind of even recently, you know, when I've been out with people, um, I, I think one of my friends joked, and he, rightly so, that like, wow, you know, I, I'm actually getting to see you eat. Like, this is probably the first time you've eaten in two days. Like, well, yeah, that kind of is, but it, it, it is. So, um, okay, that, I don't know where I'm going with that, but yeah. So, carbs, keto, yeah, awesome. That's my answer. Thank you, Hannah. You're awesome. We should train again, and hopefully, I'll see you in Annapolis soon. Uh, have you gotten married yet? If not, uh, good luck. If you have, congratulations. I don't know. I don't follow people that closely. So, all right. Anyway, um, next question. Uh, another question I'm happy to dive into from Ma Brada Shark Bay Dre Andres Aguirre. Uh, man, old Kajuo Hana buddy, love you, man. And I am, and I'm sorry I've been a total slacker and haven't been down to San Diego get some rolling with you. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, how do you train repeated intense cardio efforts? And I'm going to assume what you're asking me is, how do I train things like jujitsu or martial arts or stuff like that on a on a lower carb or lower caloric intake or lower lower caffeine intake, um, that's a really good question. And again, there's a lot of parts to it. I think I think the um, the answer I, I gave you on Instagram was it's all about managing variables, and it's true. But there's some strategies we have that, like I said, that I have. So let's let's dive into those a little bit. Um, for example, dead air. Sorry. Going into this, um, there are things like, I mean, you might need to manage your volume intensity. So, so if you know you're going to make like a dietary switch, for example, so like, so for example, I said, okay, I know like, so about, uh, what's August, I mean, mid-August is, uh, you know, I said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut some calories, um, cut some, you know, manage some macros, try and lose some, some weight pretty quick. And part of the, and, and so part of the strategy there was only like, okay, I'm going to have to cut back some things. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to be really careful about, what my gym workouts look like, you know, I'm not gonna be able to train every day, or at least not the way I might want to, you know, I'm gonna have to, I'm actually gonna have to like make sure that I'm, I'm training different energy systems like correctly so nothing gets super fatigued, super overtaxed, and, I, and I'm still not great at it. I mean, there's days where I wake up and, you know, I can tell my nervous system is shot and I'll still go into the gym and do something stupid and, and then my nervous system will be even more shot and then the next day I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll calm down and do like a performance recovery day or something like that. But, um, so sorry, the answer I'm trying to get to there is, is, is you're definitely gonna have to be, you definitely have to be a little more, um, I guess cognizant, I guess mindful is a great word, of, of how you're training, what your training cycles look like. So if you're used to, so say, you know, you're eating kind of more of a performance-based diet, you're eating a lot of carbs, you're eating a lot of, you know, you're eating pretty often, your calorie intake's pretty high, you're drinking a lot, you know, you're taking some stims, you're taking some, some pre-workout, drinking some, you know, coffee, you know, taking your caffeine. Um, 
you're gonna have to understand that coming off of that stuff is gonna, you know, I mean, obviously your body's gonna adjust. So your body's gonna kind of freak out a little bit if you, if you keep throwing the same volume and intensity at it uh, when it was on, you know, when it was on those higher calories and, and other stims. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know I mean? Um, you know, depending on how far down you go, you may have to back all the way off and you might even have to just do some development of, of some other things. That actually kind of dovetails with another conversation I was having uh, with my friend Brad. Um, who, uh, what did I say specifically? Oh, I made a comment about how um, I'm going to, you know, part, part of the reason I'm doing this kind of no coffee, no, you know, uh, no coffee, no carb, um, no, remember actually more the no carb part was I want to drop some weight really quick so I can get back to doing things like Kapoleta and Jiu Jitsu and things that kind of really sort of hammer on your body and are not, especially Kapoleta are not awesome to do if you're so super heavy and I know there's folks out there who are and I've seen I've played with some really big folks I've played with folks who are bigger than me and maybe that works and, and you know if that works for you that's awesome um to be honest it doesn't work for me uh you know I can't play the kind of game I want to play I think more than that I can't develop the skills I want to develop if I have things like you know like my stomach in the way or if I'm like if my knees are getting beat to shit because I'm trying to like do aerials or something like that same with jujitsu you know if I can't do a Nimanari role because, you know, like I said, because I'm fat and inflexible, it's like, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you know, I'm going to back off a little bit, you know, and just work on developing those prerequisites. You know, the, I guess the conventional wisdom that we try to apply, and it's funny, I was, I was talking to my good friend, Tony, Tony Bones, what's up, Silverback Grappler, um, about this, this whole idea of, and I'm going to get some heat for that, for this, and it's, that's fine. This idea that like, well, just show up and, and things will happen. It's like, well... Yeah, I mean, for a little bit, you know, especially if you're new to it, you know, I mean, newbie gains exist in everything, but at some point, we have to start looking at the needs of the skill and the process of skill development, if that's what you're doing. Now, if you're just trying to get into shape and you want to gym, yeah, just show up, you know, just show up. If you have a smart trainer, they'll be careful about how to schedule your workouts and you should be fine because you're not trying to develop a very, very intensive skill. You know, you're not trying to learn how to do, a, you know, him and I roll the inside heel hook, or you're not learning, trying to learn how to do a, you know, a, you know, a, you know, a kick gainer into a, into a jumping roundhouse or something, or, you know, or a handstand walk. But at some point, as you try to do more, things that require more skill, especially physical skill, where it's not just, you know, it's not just being strong, it's being strong and being mobile and, you know, having your CNS tuned to do the things it needs to do. You're going to need to maybe, like, look at the parts, you know, and say, hey, what's wrong? You know, this is something, this is one of the things I took from FRC, which, you know, some of you guys know is one of my favorite systems. I love FRC. And, and same with the FMS. Is it like, you know, at some point, maybe it's not a bad idea to, 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 to reverse engineer all the way back to, you know, your shoulder or your knee or, and say, okay, well, is this thing doing what it, what it needs to do? Oh, it, it's not. And continuing to pound on it is actually detrimental because all it's doing is setting me up for injury and compensation. So maybe I should just work on that for a bit. And I'm not saying, because some of you guys who know how I feel about hurt, I'm not saying we should go into corrective or prehab, rehab, health, or well, purgatory, I guess is the, the correct word. And, and we shouldn't. We should actually... You know, we should figure out how to how to get those prerequisites set up as quickly as possible so we can get back to the skill development path. But I am become more of the opinion that like it's okay to say, okay, I'm gonna like, yeah, I'm just gonna do focus prerequisite development for just a short period of time and then get back to it. And and this works. I mean, you know, for me, for example, I don't do near as much mobility work as I as I did three or four years ago when I was first starting out, just because I've done it. Every, almost every day for the last three or four years. I mean, I've done, you know, anytime I go to the gym, you know, my warm up is mobility based, my cool down is mobility based. In the morning when I get up, I do a little bit of just kind of moving my shoulders and neck. And, you know, and, and it, it's just, I just don't need to do as much of it anymore. So now I can actually focus on those little things like, oh, gee, my uh, internal rotation on my right hip maybe needs a few more degrees. Okay, let's just focus on that for a month. So, that was a really long way of not answering another question, which is something you guys are gonna see me do all the time. Take somebody's question and relate it to five other things and then not end up anywhere near the answer somebody was looking for. So, but since you're since, since, since you're my voice, uh, Andres, let me let me answer that um, properly. 
take everything I said and, <clears throat> and to filter it down, it, it's basically about making sure that you are putting yourself in an optimal position to train the way you want to train, okay? And that means being, that, that means making sure that your nutrition is on point, making sure your lifestyle is on point, making sure that your recovery, that's the big one, making sure that your recovery is on point. Uh, but that's the other thing that I noticed. I mean, even though I, so my, my uh, the way my calories are set up right now, and this is a whole other conversation that anybody's interested, but you know, I'm only eating four days a week, and I want to say my upper is 2,500 calories of feeding, so that comes up to you know, about 10 or 11,000 calories a, uh, a week. So you can figure out like what kind of crazy definite deficit I'm setting myself up. Up in. But but I also have a lot of like uh, let's say stored food, so I, I I'm not too worried about it for a bit. Um, and I've noticed that as long as I'm doing things like you know hitting the sauna after I work out, going for a walk, you know I mean you know walks that's the thing. Even if it's just a ten minute walk, I feel like that's something everybody should do, either for cardio or for recovery. You know uh, we, you know in PBSC we call it list low intensity steady state. I'm sure other people call it that too. That's just where I heard it first. Um, Sleep, sleep is huge. Um, mobility work, decompressive work, and I'm not saying you know all whatever to Joe Rogan. You know you don't if you don't want to do yoga, you don't have to do yoga. You know there's so many great little kind of movement snacky programs out there. You know five minute flows, uh, daily durability. You know movolution injury proofing to, to name a few. Um, but make sure you're doing something like that. You know make sure that uh, you know one of the one of the things that I think um, I forget where I heard this first, but this idea that when you train, you know, you're taking things, you know, you, you're, you're making a withdrawal against your body when you train. So you need to make sure that you're doing all these things that, you, that you're reinvesting, you know, um, that you're redepositing, I guess, or you're making new deposits uh, after, you know, after you do a hard training. So that's, I mean, that's, that, that, that's really what it boils down to. It really is that simple. I mean, and like, and I did mention, you know, some ideas about proper supplementation, you know, things like, you know, yeah, you can take some, so make sure you're taking your electrolytes, for example, because it's what, it, it's what plants crave. All right, all right, horribly botched, like, pop culture reference, which is actually really appropriate right now, sorry. But, um, but you guys get the point. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been taking uh, Element now for a couple of months, and I love that stuff, you know, I mean, you yeah, know, what else am I taking? I'm taking some Noon and some KSP tabs. What's up, Viking Ninja? But yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in you know electrolyte supplementation now, and I mean if you want, if you don't want to spend money, you know, and I know it's totally taboo to say this, but I say it, you know, get, find a snake juice recipe, just Google snake juice and mix up some of that. Um, so okay, so now we're getting, now we're getting really specific, but um, yeah, just to just to kind of boil that that down, um, yeah, like I said, just manage your variables, manage your manage your training schedule, manage your recovery, manage your your nutrition, manage your lifestyle, and that kind of like you know speaks back to the conversation we just had. You know, do these, you know, run these dietary experiments and find the dietary tools that work for you. And then, and I would say, I'd say, again, for a lot of the people that I talk to and who are answered, who are asking me questions like this, we, we are not, we don't train like normal people. And the problem is we don't think of, we, we try to think about our training like normal people, you know. We try to think that training is just something we do and yeah, we love doing it and, you know, I'll go to jujitsu or I'll go to my martial arts class or my dance class or whatever and then I'll go live my life. But the level, I know the level some of you guys perform at, man, you should really be thinking about how to schedule proper training blocks, you know, especially if you know, so for example, um, me, um, and I'm, I'm going to make this public, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out so you guys can drop out if you want. But uh, I, you know, I put out to a couple of people a little while ago. I was like, "Hey, you know, next year sometime we should all like get kitted out in like our, our Viking Ninja gear and go to a jiu-jitsu tournament." And you know, and of course, I'm being like revolution next November. So, so now I'm thinking, okay, well, I want to be tournament ready by November. And you know, which you know, part of this is you know me getting down down to like weight that I'm comfortable going back and training at, <clears throat> and starting from there. So that that's a great you know that's a, that's a great cycle. I mean, a year that's that's a big macro cycle. You know, I mean, you can set up like you know, you know you can set up a bunch of different like like little training cycles in there so and i'm not saying you gotta like totally nerd out about it um although if you want some help hey hit me up i'm happy to i'm happy to help people develop develop training cycles um what was i saying oh yeah like i said you don't have to like get super granular like me like 
you guys, I have like sprint sheets and you know with formulas and stuff that you know that, that kind of that, that, that dictate all my detail, all my training and, and nutrition. And, and so the question is, why am I not in better shape, right? Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. But um, but but yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, a question like this, which is basically, how can I train? You know, how can I do the training I want to do? Well, look at the training, look at what the training you want to do is, and then maybe have an honest conversation with yourself about, hey, maybe I need to like, I need to prioritize how I plan this. Um, and again, you know, uh, Dre, like, I'm happy to talk to you anytime. You've got all my contact info, call me, Zoom me, whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and thanks for the question, that was an awesome question. Uh, let's see. Next question. I think I think I think there's one more big question I wanted to answer. <clears throat> oh, actually, no, no, no. There's uh, so so uh, speaking of the silverback grappler, uh, Tony. So he asked me a, a great question, which is uh, how how are you still alive? Um, I love that question because I get asked that all the time. Um, I, I I feel like people think that I train harder than I do, uh, and and like I said, yeah, I train every day. I mean, I'm in the gym every day doing whether it's hypertrophy work or power work or um, or just mobility, performance recovery. Uh, there's days I train a couple days, you know, a couple times. You know, I try to do an hour to 90 minutes of cardio every day. And, you know, I, I recognize that I'm super slow. You know, some of you guys know who know how I live, like know that I live super simple. I don't have a ton of overhead. You know, um, I'm, I'm kind of just me. You know, I work, I train, I go to con eds and in between I well now I'm gonna start making more content so I, I guess the answer there is I I can recover a lot is what it boils down to um you know yeah because like you know as soon as I get done at the gym I jump on the you know I jump on the treadmill for an hour and or I go for a walk for an hour as soon as I'm done there I go sit in the sauna for half an hour and when I get home I you know I do some mobility work and you know maybe I'll, I'll run the uh, the power massager over, over my legs or whatever and uh, so I guess that's the answer is that, well I'm okay I'm, I'm being I'm being injured there's there's, a, there's another side to this ah, man I, I don't like talking about myself but I guess that's not really what, what we're doing here so um, I guess the other answer is that uh, I mean my parents had me in sports like since I was four years old you know, I was you know I started martial arts when I was four I was playing peewee sports you know soccer baseball basketball swimming all kinds of things. So I've been, I, you know, I grew up, I, I had a very physical upbringing. And when I got, I mean, it wasn't really until I got into college that I stopped kind of training a whole lot. And then as soon as I got, as soon as I dropped out of college, you know, that then I started lifting again and then started doing capoeira. And then from there I started lifting even more. And then, and then after Mestre had, had the, the Come to Jesus talk with me, which was, hey, you know, you need to lose some weight. You're, gonna, you're never gonna be really good at this, which I, to this day, I am so thankful that somebody sat down and was honest and said, stop sucking. Um, Cause that's kind of why I'm doing the whole fitness thing now. <clears throat> but, you know, and so, so from there, you know, I started to really just kind of apply my nerd brain to like training and, and I just experimented and I did some stupid training and some intelligent training. But again, you know, just being in an environment, I mean, you know, the way Mestre used to train us, you know, some of you guys who trained with me know, you know, we would, we would train you know, six, seven times a week. So there were times where I was doing a couple of what every day and lifting on top of that and just building that work capacity. So, you know, now when I'm not training, sorry, I am training seven times a week. <laughs> so now, now that I am still training that much, but not nearly as intensely, you know, I'm not doing, I mean, yeah, a typical training session for me, you know, from warm up to you know, movement prep to, you know, to shower and leave is, you know, could be three hours, could be three and a half hours, but I'm not grinding the whole time. But because I know what it's like to work for a three or four hour stretch, you know, for me, it's just like, yeah, I can, I can, I can just kind of do that. So, um, I guess that's it. I guess it's just, I've just been doing this for a long time and, you know, I've, I've been experimenting a lot and I've tried a lot of different things and, you know, it just all comes out in the wash. And I sleep really well. I mean, really well. So you guys don't even know. Um, so, 
Uh, I mean, if anybody has specific questions about that, about work capacity or, you know, things like that, I think I was talking to, uh, if you're watching this, Garrett, I know we were talking about how to, how to develop better work capacity for, uh, for that Viking Ninja Blue Belt. Yeah, coming up, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's how I'm still alive. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just salt of the earth, blue collar gym guy. I've just been training for a long time and it works for me. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I think, I think there was one more question, and this is the one that I really want to answer because this one comes from the man himself, Mike Goff, the guy who proposed the challenge for November and, uh, and is why I'm here, and he says, uh, why no coffee and no carbs? What's the goal? And I touched on this in the last video, but um, I've been thinking about it a lot more, and it's, it's kind of cool. I actually had a, a really interesting event, little occurrence today that made me realize, hey, this is why I need to do this. Um, I, I had lifted and I'd done, done, gone for a walk and so I was up in, you know, I, was, I, was, I was at the office and I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk over to, uh, you know, Safeway and grab some, you know, grab some noon and grab, uh, grab just a, like a meat stick or something. And uh, as I popped up of you know, the building, I walked by this coffee shop that, uh, that I go into every so and almost reflexively, I mean, it was like a trigger. It was like, oh, I should go buy a coffee. And, you know, I, I, and that was the weird thing. It wasn't, it was almost not really a conscious thought. It, it really was just a reflex. Like, oh, hey, coffee shop. So that kind of made me think, huh, all right. So even if, and, and I'm not one of those people who gets all jittery on caffeine. And like I said, even now, I'm only drinking maybe, I was only drinking like a, maybe a cup of coffee a day. But just that it's that much a part of kind of my psyche is like, well, all right, I, I wanted to see if I can like kind of break that conditioning. And, you know, because that's the thing, you know, I go to work, there's free coffee there, I can, you know, and we have really good coffee, I'm, I'm going to miss my, my hairbender, so thankfully I don't think I'm going to the San Francisco office at all this month. <clears throat> so, so that's part of it. The other part of it, at least for the coffee, is for, is for me, there's, um, I had a really interesting sort of kumbaya moment with myself regarding uh, the other kind of drinking and um, I don't really drink anymore in fact if you've hung out with me and we and, and I've had a beer that's probably the first time I have had a drink in a while because I just don't do it and, and, and it's interesting because you know I used to hang out with a lot of people where that's what we did you know, we'd go out and drink we'd go bar hop and, and nothing against that it was a good time I love all those folks I, I miss a lot of them we don't hang out much anymore but I, I just noticed over time I just I stopped doing it and I just became pretty much the epitome of a social drinker, you know? And it was weird because at one point, I, I don't even know where this comes from, but I felt like being a social drinker was bad. It's like, no, no, if you're gonna drink, you gotta be all in, son. Like, you gotta, you know, you know if you're not going home and having, having a couple beers, like, you're, you're a poser. Like, that's, that's, I mean, that's the stuff, some of the stuff is going on in here. And I don't know where, like I said, I don't know where that comes from. But eventually I kind of just got to the point where it's like, well, I, you know, this is just how I'm gonna drink. I mean, if I'm out with people, I'm gonna have a beer and then the rest of the time it's fine. And so I was kind of looking at my coffee consumption. I was like, well, do I need to drink coffee? I mean, maybe I should, maybe it's just something I do because it's there and I like the taste, which is true. I do like, I do love the taste of your coffee. Um, and Josh, if you're watching this, I have not had a chance to try some of your coffee yet. And I'm so sorry. I feel so horrible that I was like, hey, I'm gonna go on this, uh, this coffee fast and not drink this delicious, this probably delicious like home roasted coffee. Um, but I, I will, I, that's, that's how I'm, I'm going to break my coffee fast or something like that. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for the generous gift of, of home roasted coffee because, yeah, I love coffee. Um, but, I, and I think that's, that was why, like, like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking at this as like, a, can I quit coffee after this? Like, no, I just want to see like, you know, if I don't drink coffee, is it a big deal? And honestly, I don't think it is because, like I said, I mean, most days when I go to work, I, I was noticing this, I would get my coffee in the morning. And by, you know, by the time I left the office around three or four, like it, my cup would still be half full. It's like, wow, like why did I even do that? So I think it's just a discipline thing. It's just to see if, um, yeah, just, you know, just see if, this, if, if maybe it's just a thing that I was doing that I didn't really need to do. Uh, as far as no carbs, um, so the no carb thing, Again, going back to the first comment, the first question was that I've just found over time that for me going no carbs really really helps me with with, with losing weight. And you know, it's it, you know I I really you know this, this is something you, know, you guys know I me. Mean, you guys you guys see me like oh you know know that I'm I've 
been a big person. And um, you know, that's kind of something I want to just kind of like, you know, figure out, get a handle on. Like, I don't, I don't like being big. I, mean, I like being strong. I like being like jacked, but I don't like being fat. And you know, sorry, like, you know, but I, you know, I apologize to any of the body positivity fat, fat acceptance folks who are watching this. But if that works for you, great. But me, I don't like being fat. I don't like it when I'm fat. And going no carbs really works for me. And in fact, I actually started uh, kind of a, like I said, a really focused weight loss effort mid mid August and that's when I started playing around with like you know the salt water fasting and the extended fasting and and um yeah I lost a lot of weight I mean I think I woke up <clears throat> I think I woke up Thursday at 210 down from probably about 240 245 um and yeah it might not be a healthy way to it might it might not be healthy to lose that much weight that fast but I mean I don't you know I haven't lost a ton of muscle mass my strength hasn't really gone down just I think because of what I've been doing and I actually want to lose a lot of weight really fast because I want to set myself up for another experiment because that's what I do. You know, some people, you know, your body's a temple. Some people, what was it, uh, John Marshall's body's a wonderland. For me, my body's a lab. I love to experiment. And one of the things I've never done is I've never done a proper reverse diet. Um, so, you know, I've been reading uh, Lane Norton's book, Fat Loss Forever, and really, really great book. What do you think about Lane Norton? Um, it's... I, book because it's not laid out very well but you know no no offense the, the information inside is great um i would recommend you pick it up um but yeah and, and so i've known about reverse dieting for a while so that combined with something like carnivore like i said i did carnivore about a year and a half ago when sean baker first kind of came on the scene and started talking about it, at least more at least when i became aware of it and man it really worked for me it was so so you know i kind of want to get myself into a situation where i'm somewhat metabolically compromised um and then set myself up for this kind of a because the next experiment i'm going to run is i actually want to do kind of a sort of a i guess a carnivore based recomp slash bulk you know clean bulk um when i get down to you know my goal is so so this so the goal i'm the goal i'm looking at is is uh, you know when i uh when i compete you know i want to compete in you know with the 88 88 kilograms which is what 190 Five pounds, something like that. I don't know. Just, you know, see now I have to know. I know, I know. And every and everybody knows. It's like, well, you aren't you supposed to be able to do that in your head. I mean, saw you do it at PPSC and have it. Yeah, you did. I'm sorry. Yeah, 195. Um, Round up. So you know what I'd really like to do is um, by January be down to something like you know maybe 185, which yeah, is, you know that's. It's another big chunk of weight. I mean, that's, that's what, that's another 35 pounds, um, maybe 190, I don't know. We'll see, uh, well, we'll see how I feel. But I, I, wanna, I wanna be below 200 by January. You know, that's two more months, so you know, that's another eight weeks. And then I wanna kinda try and recomp and then, you know, recomp and then maybe bulk up a little bit from there. But I wanna do it clean and I wanna do it, you know, reverse dieted properly, but, and with, you know, a tool like cardio. So that's kinda why the no carb thing is, um, you know, it, it's something I, I know I'm going to be able to go low-ish calorie on no carb just because, again, as, as Mark Bell called, I have all this stored food on me for, for a bit. Um, so I know I'm going to be able to get down to that and then I'll be able to come back up at a pretty, you know, or I'm sorry, I, I hope I'll be able to come back up using some of these strategies cleanly and, you know, there's a couple other experiments I'm running too um, that I could, I could talk about. I think, I think I've mentioned it to some of you guys and if, if you want to hear about those, let me know. Um, happy to happy to go into some of that as well so um yeah so so i guess i guess that's the answer um you know no coffee because i just wanted to see if i could based on sort of things i've been noticing and you know the whole thing i explained about you know, drinking alcohol and again there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol like i said i love good beer and good scotch you guys know that and the no carb thing just because you know i just wanted a, a good bookended sort of I guess time slide where I said, you know what, I'm just like for this branch, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna go as low carb as possible. And because I like to, even though I manage my carbs, um, I'm not super careful about what that intake looks like. It's just, I just say, hey, okay, I just trained. So I'm gonna, you know, maybe I'll have a, a bagel or something, you know, if I'm at the office or I'm at work. So I know that's a little extreme, but you know what I'm saying? So, and of course now, like, uh, I think I just posted this on the Instagram too, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, Sean, Dr. Sean Baker's declared no veg November 2. So, um, and 
but for now, I'm not going to get into the whole vegetables good, vegetables bad. I mean, that's, man, that's become a landmine. <laughs> um, but it's kind of exciting, right? It sort of just points to like how you can use data and stats and analysis to kind of, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I think that's it. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I did get a bunch of random emoji responses to, to my question sticker. That's that's new. Um, I appreciate it. Thank thank you guys. Uh, let's actually let's see. Let's uh, so there. Let's see if there's uh, let's see if any other questions popped up on the other question. Oh, I kind of follow. Are you still live? Fist bump. Uh, nope. That's uh, that's what we have for now. So. Yeah, again, thank you guys who submitted questions. Thank you, everybody who's continued to participate and interact with me. Um, like I said, this is, we're, we're going to do more of this, and I apologize the lighting is crap, but again, now that I've sort of, um, you know, now that I've sort of, man, God, it's weird to say this, though, now I've sort of, like, committed to, like, being in a place for a bit. Um, you know, some of you guys know, kind of know the story about me sort of fleeing from the Bay a couple years ago, and sort of wandering the earth for, uh, <laughs> for a couple years. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been, it's been interesting, but, you know, I, but I, I think I kind of realized maybe it was time to start, I guess, moving a little bit less and starting to build a bit. Um, and that's kind of when I started looking for a new apartment, you know, this summer was sort of what I was looking for. And I'm, and I'm lucky, you know, the place I'm in now, I, I, I really love. I mean, I can see myself staying here for a while. Um, it's in a great neighborhood. I love the U District. You guys are in Seattle, like, know what's up. <clears throat> um, it's cheap. Uh, it's cold in the winter and warm in the summer, which I appreciate. And, um, you know, I'm actually gonna, even though I'm a card-carrying minimalist, I'm actually gonna uh, turn this into a, turn this into, like I said, turn this into a spot where I can shoot content and maybe do some training figure out what I'm going to do, sort of, you know, I think I said this goal, was figure out sort of what my place in the, the fittest sphere looks like. Um, because that's, I guess that's another thing I'm going to think about a lot is what, you know, the, this entity called Coach Seth Gibson, you know, what, what, is, what is that, you know? Um, I'm thing I realize is, you know, I, I, I love research. I, you know, I, I, I like teaching classes. I like coaching folks. I so know if it's something I would want to do full time. You know, I think about what people like, say, Peter Atia are doing, or you know, Peter Atia or Andy Galvin, or you know, these who, who I was supposed to go to Chicago and see this weekend, but damn it, work. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just I'll, I'll sign up for his expensive Patreon and get on the phone consults with him or something like that. But um, yeah, so I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is thank you guys all for sticking with this and thank you guys who continue to ask me questions. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing these AMAs every week at least for the duration of, uh, you know, NCNC and V November. Um, so the next one I'll probably live stream from, you know, as many places as I can. Unfortunately, for some reason I can't install Instagram on a pixel. I have to, well, I have to side load it, I guess, for that one but whatever but um yeah because uh you know some of you guys know i was doing live streams on facebook you know about a year and a half ago and that was a lot of fun i really enjoyed interacting with folks um so i definitely want to get back to that um so you know i'm gonna put up uh i'm gonna put up the, the, the call for questions all week um you guys are always free to dm me questions i mean all the contact info is in the description so you know my instagram my my, my pro facebook quote unquote uh, my email, my website, yeah, um, let's, let, let's kick this page, let's do this thing, because um, the other thing I realize I like doing is I actually really like creating content, uh, you know, I mean, we've been having this conversation now for almost 45 minutes, and, you know, it feels like I've only been here for a bit, and I really enjoyed it, so we're definitely going to do this more often. Um, and again, you know, I know this is something people ask me for all the time. You know, a lot of folks are asking me, hey, you know, when are you going to start doing your dailies again? You know, when are you going to start doing your icebreakers, all that. So, yeah, man, it, it's all coming. And, you know, for real this time, I promise. Um, so, right. Um, I guess that's what I got for now. 
Thank you, everybody, again. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everybody who contributed. You know, and, and even the folks who uh, I didn't address on the, on the live stream. You know, my buddy, good old, good old Mr. Lau, Michael. Thank you very much. Um, you know, Becky, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, all you guys, man. Yeah, you guys know who you are. Um, thanks. Um, tell your friends. You know, tell them to. You know, let's connect. Let's 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 do more of it. All right. And now I'm just dragging this out. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eat some food with no carbs. Cheers.